Can he get the edge? Gonna try, he's got it, record time! Donnell Pumphrey smashes the record. On the return, it's Rashad Penny, and Penny finds the seam. Penny to the outside! Penny will go the distance! First and goal. Fake to Penny, open man. So today's guest in 2012 helped lead the San Diego State football program to their first ever Mountain West championship. It was 10 years ago that as a redshirt sophomore in the program, this young man was called upon midseason to step into a make or break conference road matchup against the conference newcomer, Nevada Wolfpack. He entered mid game in a hostile Mackey stadium with the Aztecs down to an explosive Wolfpack offense and what could have easily derailed the rest of the season and possibly more. Ended with him throwing three touchdown passes, including one in overtime and a successful two point conversion for the 39 to 38 win and one of the most thrilling SDSU Aztecs victories. The Aztecs the rest of that season added on five more wins against UNLV, punching a ranked Boise State team in the mouth on the blue, took down Air Force, and wrapped up the Wyoming Cowboys and Laramie to help complete a seven-game win streak to end the season and earn one of the three shares of that 2012 conference championship. Making his Sons of Montezuma podcast debut from Texas, we have quarterback Adam Dingwell. Huge night for you. How are you feeling right now? Oh, I'm so excited. I mean, thanks be to God and all these guys I got around me. I couldn't have done it without myself and the coaching staff, the defense. I mean, everybody. It was all about them. It, I want to take no credit for this win. It was all about my teammates and God. Yes, sir. I appreciate you having me on here, guys. Good to be here. I've been I've been looking forward to this conversation uh, for for a while. So yeah, I'm, I'm pumped. I'm glad you were able to come on. Of course, man. Yeah, excited to be here. And uh, yeah, as soon as Mateo reached out, I think it was, you know, it's been a while now, but you know, it's been good to kind of <laughs> chat over the last few months. And I was like, man, I got to get on there. And you know, I love what these guys are doing. So yeah, happy to be here. I know I hit you up a, a few months ago, man. Yeah. And you know, just thinking about that 2012 season, and now we're 2022. I know. Does it feel like 10 years ago? Man, so my wife actually brought that up today and she was like, it's been 10 years since, you know, since that time. And I was just like, yeah, I hadn't really thought about it. So no, to answer your question, it doesn't really seem like it was that long ago, but, um, you know, it was. And, you know, 10 years here, it's it's a really cool memory. Um, and so thankful for that and all the guys that were a part of that championship run and uh, the memories memories we made you know we'll have those for a lifetime so it's uh it's always nice to to reflect on those and so you're in texas currently right in texas yeah back in uh, rockwall it's the hometown uh, high school i went to uh so me and my wife uh moved back here after college she actually played volleyball out in Notre dame uh so we did the whole long distance thing moved back here and we're back in the hometown and couldn't be happier um yeah coming up on six years now so it's uh it's great love it here and uh love texas so yeah were you um so you guys were like high school sweethearts and you guys went to different colleges correct yes so yeah she took off uh, and had a full ride scholarship to notre dame played volleyball out there um and graduated in four years uh same kind of situation as me you know we uh, made it work it was nice our schedules really coincided 
um, football season, volleyball season, summers, Christmas breaks, all of that good stuff. Um, so not to say it was easy by any means, but you know, somehow we made it work and uh, God had a plan for us and here we are. And I've uh, got two young girls now, four year old and a uh, one year old. And man, we were blessed, we were happy. And uh, yeah, we're very thankful for, for where we're at. Awesome, man, sounds like good things have been happening. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And, uh, you know, all glory to God. Can't be more uh, thankful for where I'm at and, you know, my family and uh, definitely a blessing. So so what does Adam Dingwell find himself doing these days back home in Texas now? Yeah, so Adam Dingwell is uh, first and foremost, man, a husband and a father. I think that, um, you know, as I kind of just alluded to, you know, is obviously very important to me. Um, and just the way I was raised. So, you know, that comes first, but I work with a company here in Rockwell doing consulting, um, trend HR. We actually help a lot of small businesses, uh, with some of their employee administration, things like that. Um, and I love it, man. It, it's great. You know, love being here in the hometown. It's, uh, provided a lot of flexibility. And, uh, aside from that, you can catch me, man, watching football or baseball, basketball, whatever sport is on, whatever season it is, uh, you know, it's on in the house. How, how much, how, how closely are you uh, following the Aztecs these days? You know, I still follow them, still try to keep in touch, you know, guys that are maybe going to the league or, you know, some of the recruits that they landed. Um, I'll always check the score to see if they won. I mean, that's a must. You know, I still keep in touch with a couple of the guys I played with, and, you know, we'll talk about that. But, um, you know, I wish I, I knew a little bit more. I got to catch a, a few more games, but they're not always on out here in Texas. And if they are, they might be coming on at, you know, 10 o'clock at night. So it makes it tough sometimes. Yeah, yeah it's great. <laughs> Well, a lot's happened since since your years, man. I mean, a lot Definitely. of growth, a lot of great a, things, a lot of success, a lot of, you know, whether it's bowl appearances, consecutive bowl appearances, player, like you said, players going to the league, making it, yeah. you know, to various uh, professional stages in their career. But one of the big reasons why I wanted to reach out to you, Adam, uh, for the obvious reason, the 10 year, yeah. you know, anniversary have you. Yeah. But that 2012 season is such an underrated season in all of Aztecs history. I don't think, I don't know if, if you fully grasp that, if yeah, all the fans think, fully grasp um, that. I think uh, being this far removed, um, definitely it's cool to look back. And I think not just myself, but my class, we take a lot of pride um, in what we were able to do um, with our, within our time there. And then specifically in that 2012 year, um, you know, I could run through, you know, 20, 30 people off that roster who, you know, still can just think of specific memories with those guys. And, um, man, that was a, a, a hell of a run. We had a ton of fun. Um, it was a great team, a lot of leadership on that team. And, um, man, I couldn't have done it without those guys around me. So, um, you know, uh, fantastic memories. Love looking back on that. Bear with me. I, I want to yeah. paint this picture because when I think of that situation of that 2012 year, okay, so it was Rocky Long's second season as head coach after Brady Hoke had moved on to Michigan, right? Yes, sir. And the team was just coming off of, like, a pretty bitter loss in the New Orleans Bowl the, the previous year, 2011, where yep. we all kind of learned what stemming was or, or didn't really learn what stemming yeah, was. Yeah, right? tough call, tough call. I didn't see it. Didn't <laughs> see it on the film. <laughs> and so, like, that, that 2011 team, you know, gone were some of those big familiar names that a lot of the Aztec nation had grown to know, like, like Ryan Lindley, of course, and, you know, Ronnie Hillman and, you know, Miles Burris and uh, I think a Jerome Long, like a lot of these senior, just really, you know, big names that, that the fan base had come to, to know, they moved on. So that 2012 year was just like a very big transition, not only for coach, but for a lot of the players on the team, I can imagine. Yeah, no, it definitely was. Um, and you hit on a lot of those names, um, you know, specifically Ryan Lindley. You know, I definitely looked up to him and obviously got to watch him play very closely, um, you know, playing behind him for two years. And I think it even kind of goes back to the year before with Brady Hoke. They really established um, a culture uh, and Aaron Wellman, the strength coach, um, and really kind of, you know, got us in that mindset of, hey, we're, you know, we're going to outgrind you. We're going to outwork you. Um, and when it comes game time, you know, you're in for a brawl and, you know, we're going to see who comes out on the other side. And they really made it important to ingrain that into us. Um, and I truly kind of embodied that, I guess you could say, as a true freshman. So uh, going into that 2011 year, uh, again, being a backup, uh, it was awesome to watch those guys play um, a ton of leadership. And I think they just kind of instilled that 
you know, in us young guys, um, whether it was in practice, you know, when we did get our time and our reps, you know, they were always there cheering us on, coaching us up, um, you know, and, you know, not to take anything away from, you know, some of the younger classmen as well. We put a lot of time in, in the film room and on the field. And, um, you know, like I said, you know, got to watch a lot of the greats, like you mentioned, Ronnie, Ryan, and, you know, they set a great culture for us and we were able to kind of continue that. And so you redshirted that 20, 2010 year, right? 2010, redshirted uh, 2010 year, yep. Um, and, uh, I think that was probably the most important thing that happened to me within my college career. I definitely wasn't necessarily coming in, looking to play, uh, or to take any spot, you know, spot as, as a true freshman, especially coming in and, um, trying to learn a pro style offense. That was a big change, you know, coming from high school where 99% of what we did was in the shotgun. Um, so there was a long, you know, not long, but kind of a hard learning curve there. Um, and getting used to, you know, the offense and terminology and things, but yeah, Lindley, uh, was a great leader, um, was able to redshirt under him, um, kind of just bond with a lot of my classmates. And then, uh, yeah, that, you know, kind of culture just started there and it kind of started snowballing over the next few years. And so like, tell us because, you know, your, your recruitment and, you know, I want to hear, I want to hear yeah. about Texas football. I mean, Texas high school football is, is just, you know, it's always held up on this, the standard, no matter where you are in Texas. Right. So share yeah, with no, us a that's... little bit about your experiences. Yeah, that's true. So, um, you know, I always used to joke with the, the guys in my class, you know, Texas way better than, you know, California. And we'd go back and <laughs> forth and look into recruits and, you know, who had the best class or whatever. But, um, yeah, we put out a, a ton of talent out of this state and it really is a big deal, man. Friday Night Lights, um, you know, is is the real deal. Um, you know, the whole town shows up. I remember a couple of games specifically, but, you know, I live in Rockwall. We had a rival Rockwall Heath um, and this was our first time ever playing them. Uh, they just, you know, become 5A school. And man, the whole town of Rockwall showed up to Wilkerson Sanders Stadium here uh, and they had to bring in extra bleachers and, you know, the, the end zones were packed and never seen anything like it. It was awesome. Great experience. Um, so it really kind of, yeah, fulfilled that whole Friday Night Lights vibe. Uh, we played, you know, some of the perennial powerhouses, you know, Allen High School uh, had some good battles with them. South Lake Carroll uh, back when they had Riley Dodge, Trey Newton, um, and they were throwing the thing, you know, all over the field. So um, you know, I think Texas high school football definitely got me prepared and and ready to play at the next level. And I was thankful to to get into some cooler weather, man, uh, when it came time for those two days and everything. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Uh, so, how did San Diego State find you, or how did how did that connection happen? Yeah, so um, just kind of mentioned it, it was during two days. Uh, I remember Coach Funk; he was the O line coach, uh, part of Brady Hoke's staff. Uh, came out to a practice, uh, introduced himself to me. Uh, we had a great conversation, and then uh, not long after that, they invited me out to one of their summer camps. Uh, so went out to a summer camp, and I was kind of thinking about it earlier today. I was like, man, it was brilliant on their part because it was about 105 uh, here in Texas, and I stepped off the plane, and I was like, man, this is ridiculous. I'd never uh, been to California before, actually, so uh, wow. much less San Diego. So, um, you know, that whole wow factor hit me when I stepped off the plane, uh, went out there, had a great camp. Uh, and as I was leaving to head back to the airport, so I had to get back for school that, uh, that Monday, um, in practice, they offered me. Um, and so, man, I was just kind of taken aback, um, and really thankful. Uh, I was out there with my mom. So we flew back, you know, told my dad and, uh, really at that point, it was kind of a no brainer for me. Um, you know, I was sold, they were the first, um, school to offer me a scholarship. And that really meant a lot, uh, not just to me, but to my family as well. Um, and I felt like it was an opportunity I couldn't pass up. Um, you know, I met Brian Sype. He's, you know, was, has been, and will always be a great mentor for me. Um, and that relationship, you know, is one that I kind of, you know, hold dear, especially during my time there at San Diego State. And, uh, you know, I was so excited to go play for him and, and learn under him and all his knowledge. And, uh, you know, the rest was, was kind of history from there. So how, how long after um, they offered you, did you decide uh, to commit and how did that, did, did, how did you announce or, I committed after my junior year, um, before my senior season. Um, and there were kind of a multitude of things that went into that. Um, again, I kind of mentioned, you know, my family and how important it was, you know, not just for me, but for us, for, for me to get a full ride scholarship, um, you know, first person in my family to, to go to, to college, much less division one school and, and play, um, you know, athletics. So was very thankful, was very blessed with that. And, uh, my high school football coach, Scott Smith, you know, we kind of sat down and, uh, sat with my parents and, uh, again, kind of was a no brainer in my mind, but, uh, we wanted to get it out of the way before senior season came around. Um, you know, 
uh, kind of seemed like it was in my best interest. And I felt I don't want to have this weighing on, you know, my chest or their other schools going to reach out and my kind of tiptoeing around. Um, you know, I was thankful for the opportunity. Um, fell in love with San Diego as soon as I stepped off the plane. I was like, man, you, you can't beat this. So let's do it. Um, and then ended up signing on National Signing Day uh, in our high school, uh, high school gym. And, oh, and, see, that's uh, awesome. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was a great time. Had a lot of fun, friends and family there, a lot of guys I played high school ball with. Um, so, yeah, it was a really, really cool experience. Do you, do you have any memories as far as, like, your official visit? Um, how, how was that? And man, official visit was great. Right? Yeah, it was crazy. Again, it was, um, man, it was uh, first thing I remember, it was cold. Like <laughs> I got off, yeah. I was like, I don't think I dressed, you know, brought the clothes for, for <laughs> this type of weather. It was like 55 <laughs> degrees. I think we were down there by the ocean. You're getting the breeze. I was like, man, this is, this is awesome. But um, they took us to uh, Ruth's Chris. I do remember that. Um, oh, yeah. Great, great steak dinner. Man, you know, I'm from Texas. I, I could tear up some, some steak and potatoes. So, you know, they were right up my wheelhouse. Um, we went to, I cannot remember the name of it, but even when I was there, we took a lot of the recruits there, um, a uh, rooftop bar and, and a dinner place right above uh, the Padre Stadium. Uh, so you can look out uh, over and, and kind of see the stadium. And then I think, uh, I think Lindley was my host. There were a couple other kids um, and it's been so long, I don't remember too much but i know uh you know we went out then went down to the beach i think um had like a, a little bonfire out there and some barbecue so nothing too crazy you know friday saturday uh, hung out with kind of the, the guys met some of the other players and then uh yeah i came back sunday and man i was i was 100 percent in at that point yeah can't blame you yeah no it's a great place to live love my time out there definitely and there's definitely been like a really good texas Texas pipeline since those days, you know, growing up, yeah. I, I, I could never remember that many, you know, Texas kids coming out to San Diego state. And now it just feels like it's, it's, it's yeah. a pretty strong connection now. Yeah, it is crazy. You didn't see a lot of it. I think when I got there, um, there was another running back, Anthony Miller, um, who was from the Dallas area, I believe. Um, and we were really the only two Texas kids. And then, wow. yeah, kind of like you mentioned, I think uh, the following year we brought in Roberts, Adam Roberts. Uh, I remember hosting him. Uh, and then, man, I wish I could list off uh, a couple others, but yeah, we just kind of started, uh, pulling in some guys from out here and, uh, I think it's paid off for them. Yeah. I didn't know Adam Robert. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, I know. Robert, Robert, <laughs> this kid, um, gosh, Dan Cotman, um, uh, you know, D Lyman. Oh man, I haven't kid, heard that uh, name in so long. Guy, or he was yeah. a stud in high school. He was a beast. Um, he yeah, was a beast. Like, yeah. He, uh, I can't. I don't want to misquote, but he might've led the state in sacks that year. He was, I mean, he was, he was up there and they made a, either made it to state or they made a good run in the playoffs, but yeah, he was a stud. Um, I'm sure I'll think of a couple more uh, down the road, but yeah, quite a, quite a few kids coming out of Texas now. And it's good to see uh, that they're, they're reaching out here and, and finding some talent out here. Yeah. Dan Common, man. <laughs> yeah, right. I remember watching his highlight. I remember watching, I've always followed the recruiting so close. Yeah watch his highlight tapes and you're just like, geez, man. It was crazy, man. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for his size and and playing D line, he was quick, he was mean, Um, you know, so yeah, he was, uh, he was, he was fun to play with. So he's from, so Gottman was from Denton, right? Denton. Denton, Yeah. I think uh, either Denton or Denton guy or one of the two, I can't remember which one uh, he went to, but um, it was cool, man. I ran into him a couple years ago when San Diego state played out here. Um, uh, They played out here at uh, the Frisco stadium and, uh, hadn't seen him since we graduated and uh yeah I ran into yeah. him so it was good to see him there but you had mentioned that you keep in touch with some some of the guys still from your yeah, two or yeah I try to um man first and foremost Tim Vizzy um he's uh he's the godfather to uh my oldest daughter uh he's my boy man love him to death so shout out Viz uh make sure <laughs> should make sure he watches this uh, but him uh Dylan Denzo he's El Ruffin um Man, I'm trying to – I don't want to leave anybody out. Um, Colin Lockett talked to him just the other day. Uh, Zach Dilley, you know, lineman, roommate for a while. Um, man, yeah, so you you have a lot of connections still. Yeah, yeah, man. Try to keep in touch with those guys. Like I said kind of earlier, it's um, – and you guys know, you've talked to a lot of people. It's the bond you make, you know, when, when you're there um, that, that run deeper than the game, um, you know, and uh, you try and keep in touch with those guys. Probably not as much as I should, but, you know, we'll definitely try and touch base, uh, you know, every couple months or so and just just see how each other are doing. Well, that's a that's a good segue into that 2012 year, because a lot of those names that you just read off, man. I mean, yeah. you know, 
we were talking about all those guys in that 2011 class that had graduated, moved on. And it was like a lot of the younger guys, a lot of younger guys had to step up and, and kind of make their mark. Yeah. And you guys did. So, you know, just to look at the the running backs. I mean, we're looking at yeah. Walter Casey, Adam Wemma stepping up. up. Oh, yeah. Chad Young at that fullback position. And then, you know, you, you still had Gavin Escobar at the tight end spot, which was just, you know, just a huge yeah. target there. But yeah. all those receivers you listed, you know, Vizzies and the Denzos and Ezell Ruffins and, yeah. you know. The- Lockets and Bryce Butler. and The team was loaded because I'm looking through it now and I'm yeah. like a lot of these names are. Yeah, we had t- a lot of talent on offense, a lot of talent on defense. I mean, Leon McFadden, Eric Pinkins, uh, both those guys made it to the league. Yeah. Um you J.J. Know, Monte, Whitaker. Uh, J.J. Whitaker, DeMonte Casey. Uh, he was, uh, I think, a freshman at that time. Um, but, you know, he's still out there, out here balling. Um, so, man, a lot of talent on that team. And you read off, you know, starting with the running backs, um, you know, they carried us. And them and the, the old linemen, man, you know, can't give those guys enough credit. Hopefully I gave them enough back then. But, you know, they were uh, the bread and butter. And I think that's what we took a lot of pride on, um, you know, at San Diego State was that physicality. Uh, you may know what's coming. It doesn't matter. Um, you know, we're going to out physical you guys. We're going to out tough you guys. We're going to, you know, out mentally tough you guys, all that stuff. And, uh, they really ingrained that into us. I think we really grasped that throughout that whole year. And, um, we had a ton of talent, which can never hurt. So tell me in the beginning of that season, right. You know, you're coming in through spring camp, fall camp, leading up to that year. Uh, I believe it was Andy Ludwig, right? Well, he was, he was the OC at that time. Yes, sir. Obviously, they had brought brought in Ryan Katz, the Oregon State transfer, and he had yep. he had been the starter for that first half of the season. So, like, what what was the team's mentality? You know, I mean, it, it kind of got off and, uh, on a little bit of a sketchy start. You know, yeah, well, I think it was like two and three to start or so, something like that. Yeah, so you nailed it, two and three. Um, so going in uh, to that year. Um, Man, I was preparing to be the starter, um, and that was kind of the, the one thing on my mind. And uh, I thought I had a good shot at it. There was going to be a competition, um, you know, in spring ball, and then that following uh, summer, uh, you know, Jay Bernards was a, another good buddy of mine, uh, backup who I played with. Um, you know, we were kind of battling it out, and then as you mentioned, um, kind of found out they were going to bring in uh, Ryan Katz from Oregon State uh, after his fifth year, and that was uh, the same summer we actually brought in Bryce Butler as well from USC. Right, uh, so found yeah. out we were getting these two transfers and man, um, I wasn't upset, but I was just like, man, you know, uh, I kind of thought I had this, but then again, uh, my mentality was, it doesn't matter. Like I'm going to show up, I'm going to put in the work. Uh, I've been doing it for two years behind Lindley. If I have to do it for, you know, one more year behind Ryan and that's what I'm prepared to do. And I just was, you know, knew when my time, you know, was going to get called, I was going to be ready to go. Um, and you kind of hit it, man. Unfortunately, we got off to a slow start there. Uh, two and three, um, tough, you know, home or uh, tough road opener against Washington. I thought, you know, we could have won that game. I think we all did. Yeah. Um, we just left a lot of plays out there on the field, didn't play well. Um, and I think we got a win right after that. Maybe it was Hawaii. I can't remember the order, but um, yeah, we were sitting there two and three. And um, I think we were frustrated, but I also think uh, as a collective, we knew that wasn't necessarily anything to be worried about. We knew we had the talent. We knew we had the mentality to kind of right the ship. We just needed to uh, start making it happen and actually going out there and doing it. And um, sure enough, man, the Nevada game came around. Uh, my time was called, and uh, I'd like to kind of say the rest is history. And uh, we got things rolling there, and it was a it was a hell of a ride and a ton of fun. Was it really your birthday on that game day? October twentieth, man. It was my <laughs> birthday. I turned twenty one. Uh, wow. craziest. Yeah. I mean, you know, it was like a, a, a storybook. You don't, you don't hear that. So yeah. 21st birthday. Um, I remember it vividly, man, standing there with the headset on and cats goes down and, you know, they told me to start warming up. I didn't know uh, what happened or, you know, how bad it was, but uh, I think at that point we might've been, you know, down a score or down 10 or 13, something like that. And, um, you know, it was pretty remember, low scoring. It was pretty. It was low pretty scoring. low scoring. There, there wasn't really point, yeah. much action going on. No, you know? still in uh, the first half. I think maybe a couple minutes into the second quarter. Um, yeah. And yeah. Not a lot going on. Neither team was really, you know, putting their stamp on the game. And um, he and went down. And I think down. the listener, the listener needs to know because Nevada, the Wolfpack, 
ran that pistol offense to perfection. I mean, they, they were they yes. were pretty. Yeah, confident. no, they were uh, they were they were a really good team that year. They had the pistol down pat. I can't remember their quarterback's name, but he was having a really strong year. Cody um, Cody Fajardo. Uh, for, for, yes, exactly. For, for Hardo, yeah, for Hardo, 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 one of those. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's and exactly I didn't right. realize I didn't realize their running back was actually leading the nation in yards up to yeah. that point. I had no idea. He finished that, yeah, the year no, number two in the nation. The running back was a stud. Um, so we, I mean, we had a tall task up against us. Uh, we were getting into um, conference play. We knew it was time to, you know, it's time to put up or shut up and we got to make some things, you know, excuse me, make some things happen. And, um, you know, it was tough when cats went down. Um, it really was. I think I kind of had a whole flood of emotions, but um, as soon as I picked up the ball and started throwing, I remember Ezell came over and I think I was uh, tossing it to Vizzy and he was like, man, just do what we do in practice. Let's go out there and have fun. And, uh, that's what we did, man. We went out there and uh, very first play, Coach Ludwig called a, uh, a quarterback draw. And I loved it because I wanted to just I want to get that first hit out of the way and, you know, hopefully be the one giving it to somebody instead of taking it. And, um, man, all the jitters kind of went away and, and, you know, just went out there and played football, the, the game that you grow up playing and love without uh, with all your buddies. And, you know, ended up making a, a crazy comeback and a, a hell of a win. For the, for the people that don't know, like, like Adam, I mean, was like he was very athletic. You know, he could run. He had a really strong arm, nice size. He was like the prototypical. Like, if you're gonna start to look at a quarterback, that that was it. Yeah. So he had like Adam has a strong arm. Um, he um was big. Yeah. He was fast. Like yeah. And you and I don't think people realized it until he really got out on, on the field, but. Even like the draw plays, or even when he was able to scramble, he was able always able to make a lot of things happen. Yeah, I think um, for one, we practiced a lot of that. Um, you know, just during the week and um, going through certain drills with, with Coach Sipe. He played the position obviously at a very high level, so he um, was able to see it and uh, speak it um, at, at kind of a just a different wavelength than you know um, my high school coaches because uh, he was with me all four years in college, but we're able to do so. Um, it was really cool to learn kind of under him, his toolage. And, and yeah, I tried to just make things happen, man. I'm not going to say I was the most athletic guy by any means, but yeah, I could um, kind of get out of the pocket when I needed to. I enjoyed, you know, kind of getting out and, you know, mixing it up with, uh, with people whenever I could and, you know, uh, trying to dish out a hit every now and then. So. Well, I mean, three touchdown passes in that game. And I think people also forget that you converted on two two point conversions in that game as well. The one of one of those to to Chad Young out of the backfield. Yep. I mean, that performance, I don't know if I've ever seen just the uh, coolness about you. I mean, it's your birthday, like you said, yeah. setting that up. You know, you're coming in, you know, cold off the bench and you got to toss it around and get into this game. I mean, this was literally for the conference because I think yeah. Nevada was undefeated in the conference at the time. Yep. And we were we were in trouble of, of we had already lost to Fresno State earlier. Yep. So I remember I was at that game. That was the 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 last time yeah. I'm probably ever going to Fresno State. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tough game for sure. That's right. We had lost to Fresno. Um and yeah, you mentioned Nevada. They were kind of getting on a roll there and it was a very important game. And it was uh you know such a fun game, such a whirlwind back and forth. Um, you know, we go down and score. Um you know, defense gets a big stop. We go down and score again. You mentioned the, the two-point conversions. Um, Chad Young, he was a dog, man. Love playing with him. Um, you know, and every time I got to throw him the rock, it always made me happy because uh, he did so much, so much bruising for us and, uh, you know, paving the path from Waylon and Casey and everybody else. So it was nice to kind of reward him. And, um, yeah, it was just – it was so surreal. And then that, that final two-point conversion, we uh, called timeout uh, right before um, – or right after we scored the touchdown and there was really no question when we came to the sideline it's like man we're going home with the w today let's figure out what play we're going to call and get it done and Pass, no chance of a fumble and it also serves as a run when you throw those now routes right now out on the flat Ruffin in motion. Throwing it back to Escobar. Escobar came across the field, refusing to go down. And look at the big man going up, down, and into the end zone. Leaping over defenders to answer here in OT. 
21 yards on the connection from Dingwell to Escobar. Touchdown pass number three here for Adam Dingwell tonight. And the second TD catch for the big junior tight end, Gavin Escobar. Timeout, San Diego State. Oh, you see the look on Rocky Long's face there. This was a guy, this was a guy who promised not to punt all season long. So, so on the two point conversion, like, did you like, did, did you feel really confident in the play call? Love that play call. Yeah, that was one um, coach Ludwig, um, man, he was very good, very detailed. Um, and we practiced real time game situations, which we do with all of our coordinators. But I remember that was one of our favorite goal line plays or short, short yardage plays. Um, you've mentioned Gavin Escobar a couple of times. He was, you know, a great target. Um, Love throwing to him over the middle, you know, a safety net could rely on him, soft hands. And we knew that they'd be putting a lot of focus on him. So we drug him across the middle and um, kind of ran the, the same uh, reverse play action that we did to Chad Young out of the flat earlier in the game. And uh, just got everything flowing that way. Snuck Roberts out the backside and, uh, man, just floated it up there. It felt like the ball was in the air for 20 seconds. I was just like, man, catch this thing, and this is going to be crazy. And sure enough, we did, and it was crazy. Um, I think it was Spider 2 Y cross or Spider 2 Y delay, one of those. Can't remember the exact name. And uh, good old Albert, Adam Roberts snuck out the backside. And, yeah, man, it was awesome. Um, I don't even think I remembered it was my birthday until after the game. and. I looked at my phone and, you know, texts and everything just blowing up. I was like, oh, man, what a <laughs> surreal moment. Just unbelievable. And Dingwell, the first time starter, not necessarily starter, but the backup quarterback coming on the road, ties it up with a big throw. Well, Rocky Long immediately using that timeout. And this was a guy just a couple months ago promised not to punt it at all this year. They've punted, obviously. And now they'll go for two, trying to finish it off and get a big win. Look, wow. <laughs> look at the grin on Rocky's face. Woo. Oh, we got some drama here in Reno tonight. Laying it all on the line. Got to risk it all to win it all, baby. Dingwell back to pass. He lost it up there to the corner. Touchdown, Adam Roberts. Scared money don't make no money. Rocky Long and the Aztecs will walk away with a big win in OT. Just the second loss of the year for Chris Hawks, Nevada Wolf. I mean, it had to be kind of nerve wracking for um, Adam, for Adam Roberts, because that yeah, ball was in the air forever. <laughs> Man, I, I know when I threw it, I was like, please tell me I didn't float it, you know, too much. I tried to just yeah. make it nice and easy. And um, yeah, I wouldn't have wanted to be in, uh, be in his shoes, man, but uh, made, a, made a great play and uh, secured it for the win. And yeah, man, we had a, a great celebration in the locker room on the field after that. It was awesome. Tell me if I'm wrong, because there's a moment in that in that play where I think you kind of give this little bit of a of a leg shuffle, like just it's like the slightest yeah. little dip that yeah. kind of gets that linebacker to just just that split second. And then Man. you're able to just loft it over like it's, yeah, so it's uh, subtle. It's crazy you say that. Not a lot of people would pick that up, but uh, I do actually remember that. And I do remember that being, uh, uh, you know, a point of contention in film the next day. But. Um, I don't even know if I realized I was doing it. It was kind of just a quick, like you said, shoulder turn nod to make him think we were going to Escobar. And uh, again, snuck Roberts out the backside. He was wide open. Great play call. And uh, yeah, it was, it was awesome, man. How great is that feeling the next day in, in film study with the coaches, man, breaking that. Yeah, down. man. The next day it was awesome. Um, <laughs> we got, we flew back, you know, everybody was just jazz got in late, you know, we're on the bus back to, you know, the field house and everybody's still just pumped talking about it. And um, yeah, showed up for film the, the next day. Uh, I don't think they made us run, which was even better. So we were just <laughs> like, dude, you know, let's keep winning. Like, this is great. And uh, yeah, watch the film. Uh you know, had a couple laughs at some of the uh, the highlights there and everything. And man, it was just a, it was a great, great experience, um, not just for me, but I think for everybody. And like kind of you mentioned that kind of got the ship, you know, turned in the right direction. 
Uh, I think it was huge for us as a team to win that sort of game, uh, especially with me coming in off the bench. Um, you know, and again, that had nothing to do with me. The defense played a hell of a game, a lot of stops there in the second half. But again, winning it like that on the road, um, knowing that we can come from behind, we were able to run the ball, we were able to throw the ball, we were able to get stops. Uh, it was just, you know, a true team win. And that, again, kind of righted the ship for us and um, got things going. All right, Adam, the one thing we do got to talk about, we can't forget, is the post-game interview. Oh, yeah, I was waiting for it's it. Leg <laughs> it's legendary. It's oh, man, still I know. to this day. It's, <laughs> the infamous it's interview, the best. man. The birthday boy turning 21 tonight, the quarterback Adam Dingwell throwing that pass with Lauren Gardner right now. Thank you, James. Well, birthday boy, huge night for you. How are you feeling right now? Oh, I'm so excited. I mean, thanks be to God and all these guys I got around me. I couldn't have done it without myself. Yeah, so uh, it's funny. I actually listened to that uh, the other day just to kind of, you know, reminisce. But two great, great uh, quotes from that game. I think the announcer uh, hit him with, uh, you know, scared money don't make no money. Yeah. Uh, right <laughs> when we hit the two-point conversion. And then, yeah, I came in and, uh, man, put the cherry on top with the I couldn't have done it without myself. So, <laughs> dude, I was so ecstatic. And I don't – I think I had just gotten dogpiled. I can't even remember. We were just running around like crazy and couldn't breathe. And next thing I know, I have uh, this reporter talking to me and there's a camera there. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, man, the next day in film, we watched that about three, four times. And, uh, yeah, it was brutal. It was brutal. I don't I didn't even realize I said it, but – you know, it was it was funny. Everybody had a good laugh. I couldn't have done it without myself and the coaching staff, the defense. I mean, everybody. It was all about them. And I want to take no credit for this win. It was all about my teammates and God. We've all seen Rocky Long's punting chart. What was going through your head when he called that two-point conversion? I loved it. I wanted to go win the game. I mean, if I was a head coach, I would have done the same thing, and I got all the faith in the world in our coaching staff. That was a great call. That was a great win. Adam Roberts, what a big play for him. I mean... That was awesome. Big win for you guys and yeah. happy birthday. Thank Go you celebrate with your team. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Lauren. I mean, I, I, being on the message boards and being just a fan, <laughs> like, it was so great. Everybody yeah. loved it. Yeah, no, I know. It was uh, it was funny and yeah, everybody got a kick out of it. We were all laughing. Um, I made sure to tell everybody the next day that uh, that was not what I meant and I appreciated <laughs> them and everything they do, especially the guys up front. So. Um, yeah, it was a good find. We all had a laugh and, uh, yeah, it was definitely one of those that'll, that'll live forever, man. The game is so iconic, Adam. I mean, yeah. just from that environment there at yeah. Mackey and I've yet to go to, to Reno for a game. We oh, play yeah. there on the road this season and you out. know, I want to be there just, just to be in that same environment where this game took place. Yeah. I mean, the Reno crowd was hostile and loud and we actually had a really good contingent of Aztecs fans there. I mean, the cameras picked them up going yeah. berserk after the game. Yeah, we did, man. Um, and they always traveled well, which was which was really cool. And, um, you know, especially going on that run there, that was one of the things we all look forward to the most, just running down to, you know, our little fan section and, and singing the fight song. And, um, you know, and again, they always showed a ton of support. We had great turnout every time we played on the road. Um, and every time we played at home too, man. Um, you know, playing in Qualcomm was special. And, uh, a ton of memories there. So, yeah, I can't thank the fan base enough. And, uh, yeah, definitely, I mean, I love singing the fight song in front of them at the end of a victory. Well, as we said, you know, you guys you guys ran off five more victories to, to end the season and get that share of, of the Mountain West Championship. I mean, beating Boise on the blue is a whole nother one, right? We, we won't dissect that one as much as Nevada, but – I'll say that for another time maybe, but – Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that game was epic, man, yeah. Um, the blue field, uh, going in there, we knew if we won that game, um, didn't want to look ahead uh, to Wyoming, but we felt confident that if we can go in there and handle business, then uh, again, we have a good shot at, at this championship and you know, really putting our mark on uh, San Diego State football. And uh, man, just going into that game, I remember the uh, just the mood, the vibe around the team. Uh, we were ready to go, man. Not a lot of had to be said. Um, mm -hmm. kind of looked at the dude across from you and was like, all right, you know, we're, we're here and we're ready to take this thing and take that next step. Uh, and when Lockett took that opening kickoff to the house, yeah. we went berserk on the sideline. Man. And we were like, I mean, the chirping started. We were like, all right, boys, like, let's do this. Like, <laughs> we're here. You know, Boise State, I think they were ranked 19th at the time. You know, on the road, it was cold, on the blue turf. And, and none of that mattered, man. We were out there. 
and uh, we knew we could do it. We knew we could, you know, take it to them, and that's what we did. It was such a big statement win. I mean, the Reno game to me was was maybe even more because it got that ball, like you said, it got that ball rolling, it got that momentum yeah. rolling. Yeah. But it, just how perfect that 2012 team really encompassed, you know, that that gunslinger mentality that we all felt Rocky had, you know, yeah. refusing to punt and <laughs> going oh, yeah. for it on fourth down, you know, all the, just that whole mentality that that team yeah really bought into it kind of manifest itself it sounds like in that Boise game for you guys yeah I think you nailed it and you know again it did start with the Nevada game they had been talking to us about that mentality and uh the toughness and you know no matter what's going on like we're here to fight you know four quarters all the way to the end and um you know come out you know with a victory on the other side and I think that started in summer um just strength and conditioning with Adam Hall ton of respect for him and everything he's done you know uh for my time there and the program and then, yeah, really just kind of buying in throughout the season. Like I said, when that Nevada game hit, um, it was just a perfect, you know, set of events where uh, we knew it was going to be a special season. And then the Boise State victory definitely, um, you know, was uh, was a huge win for us, huge win for our program. Um, you know, I think it showed not just uh, our team, um, but, you know, classes to come that, man, we can play with these guys. We're here to stay, um, yeah. you know, and we're here to make a name for ourselves in the Mountain West. So. Um, you know, it was really cool to be a part of that. Definitely thankful to be a part of that. Uh, and then we were lucky enough to go up to Wyoming and, and come out with a win there and, and cap it off. I remember Adam Wemmer was a beast in that Wyoming game, man. He went, just... for, went for 250, Ooh. four touchdowns. Man, we were killing ourselves in the first half. I think we had three or four turnovers. Um, man, I had a costly pick in the second half. But, yeah, defense shut them down uh, in the second half. I think they had like six sacks, and Wema ran all over the field, man. Yeah, I think he went for 250. Um, we ran for 400 as an offense, still through for, I think, you know, a little <laughs> over 200. It was a, yeah, it was a crazy game, fun game, um, going up there to Laramie, getting a win and, you know, celebrating uh, on the way home. The first, the first Mountain West championship for That's San right. Diego State. First Mountain West championship. Yeah, baby. It was a crazy ride. And I think first one since uh, first championship since 86 or something. So uh, there'd been uh, quite a drought and, you know, we were happy to, uh, you know, to be the team. And I'm thankful to be a part of that team that, you know, kind of righted the ship and, and turned things around. Had that game, had you guys not won that Nevada game and that season had not unfolded the way that it did with the championship, with the conference championship, I mean, I mean, how important when, when you look back now was that game really? And, and yeah, I think, um, you know, I think it was, you know, very important um, for the program. And again, it kind of uh, in so many ways, not just the Nevada game, uh, but that whole year, um, the Boise game, winning the championship, so many kind of firsts for us. Um, as a program, um, especially being in a new conference. Um, it just got us started on the right foot. Now, again, you know, who knows what would have happened. We had a ton of great talent come through the program. Um, you know, Donnell Pumphrey, Rashad Penny, those guys were studs, man. You know, all-time leading rusher and, and Donnell. So um, who, who knows what would have happened? You know, they had great seasons in their own right. Um, you know, they had great leadership on those teams. A lot of guys, you know, on those teams who made it to the league as well. So I think they definitely would have would have still balled out um, and shown up. But, um, you know, again, I do like to take, you know, a lot of pride in what we did and, um, you know, like to think it had at least some sort of impact on uh, on the legacy we left and, and uh, you know, an impact on the program and kind of getting, you know, things rolling in the right direction. And uh, as far as where they're at now, man, I love it. You know, San Diego State's on the map. Um, you know, anytime you talk to somebody and, you know, I talked to them about my prior, you know, playing days and everything like, man, San Diego State. And, you know, when I first went there and you know, I was a true freshman, I was like, oh, I've kind of heard of them. What conference again? You know, stuff like that. So um, it's yeah. really cool to see it change. The stadium is going to be awesome. I've definitely been peeking at it, checking it out. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think they're, they're in a great spot. It's great to see Brady back there. Um, again, I was fortunate enough to, to get recruited by that staff and then play for them uh, for one year. Granted, I was redshirted, but really saw the culture that they established. 
um, the mentality that they brought, um, you know, and the focus and every attention to detail and, and that they preach to these guys and uh, it really pays off and you can kind of see that and, uh, you know, how they performed last year. And uh, I'm looking forward to what they're, what they're going to do this year. Uh, um, and yeah, just kind of see, uh, see what they do, but you know, I'm expecting big things. Uh, I think as, as everybody else is. Hey, Adam. So how did your time at, um, SCSU end? If I, I, I think were you met you ended up medically retiring. Correct. Yeah. I ended up uh, getting back surgery after, uh, my redshirt junior year or senior year. Um, and I had three herniated discs, my L4, L5 and S1. Uh, and that happened in the summer going into that year. Um, so, uh, I was fortunate enough to, you know, play two more games. Uh, unfortunately we lost both of those and I didn't play very well. Didn't help the team out too much, but, um, you know, I didn't want to make that an excuse for, you know, my play or anything like that, but it was time for me to kind of just take a step back and Quinn, um, you know, came in and played, uh, Quinn Kaler came in and played extremely well for us that year. Um, and then he was able to kind of leave his mark on the program as well. And yeah, so I got surgery at the end of that season. Uh, didn't want to do it in the middle. Um, and then, yeah, I got surgery at the end of that season uh, and then hung it up after that. So uh, that was how it came to a close. It was definitely bittersweet. Um, you know, definitely kind of a tough experience having to, to go out that way. Not, you know, at least how I, you know, was planning on, on hanging them up, but God had a different plan and, you know, everything worked out for the best. I'm again, so thankful for my time there and all my experiences and uh, specifically that 2012 season, man, it was one that'll never be forgotten. And, you know, I'm so thankful to be a part of that team and uh, to be able to, to have a little bit of an impact on it. Are you, do you have any long-term issues from any of the back stuff? How are you feeling these days? Man, um, I wouldn't call it long-term um, from where I was. I mean, couldn't even put stocks on my feet. Um, you know, bending on everything just just hurt uh, to where I'm at now. Uh, again, I, God had a plan for me. Um, you know, I probably needed to get that surgery. Yeah, for sure. Um, who knows what could have happened? You know, you know, I'm not saying anything would have, but um, you know, football, you know, was coming to a close for me. And um, you know, every now and then, when the weather changes or it gets cold, uh, you know, it gets you know real stiff and kind of hurts getting out of bed. And you know, you feel a little older than you are, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. I wouldn't, you know change anything from those times and I had to go back and do it all over the same way I definitely would you know that 2012 year I know we won't let people forget it that's for sure uh, yeah you know I appreciate it man no that, that means a lot and uh again I love what you guys are doing it's cool to to see you know uh people out there spreading you know the word about what San Diego State football and, and Aztec Nation is doing and uh, a lot of great things and you know, there's going to be a lot of good things here in the future, and I'm excited to watch what uh, watch what happens. What are your What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on you know? Because you're in, you're in Big Twelve country, <laughs> yeah, and soon to be SEC. Well, SEC country as well. So yeah, yeah. You know, there, we like to advocate for San Diego State. Hopefully, maybe being that first California team to join the Big Twelve in the near future. I mean, how how yeah. cool would that be for you for you to see being out there in Texas? Oh man, that would be awesome. Um, first and foremost, Big Twelve, Big Twelve is trash. Let me get that. <laughs> Let me get that. After. That's my opinion. Um, no, I just, uh, you know, I, you know, I'm San Diego State ride or die, man. That's my college team, and granted, I follow the college game. I keep up with what's going on, and you know, the top twenty-five teams and you know, top five and all that. But uh, man, if they could, uh, if they could get into the, the Big Twelve, that'd be uh, that'd be pretty cool. Um, I hadn't actually heard anything about that. So if that's in the, in the making, man, I'll, I'll get behind that bandwagon and uh, yeah, let's get them out here and uh, we can start uh, taking over that conference next. <laughs> we're, we're trying to, trying to spread that gospel for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. I'm all in. Oh man. Well, Adam, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I know it's getting dark out man. there now. Man, anytime uh, you guys want me to hop back on, I'd be happy to do it. And uh, love talking Aztecs. So. I wish you guys the best, and yeah, I appreciate y'all. Man, Thanks this for was joining us. Great conversation. Yeah, of course, always. Yeah, like I said, anytime y'all need me, I'm here for you guys. And you know, thanks for everything you're doing for us, and you know, keeping that legacy alive. If you ever make it out to Texas, let me know. Door is always open. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, man. We appreciate your time. Thanks, Adam. Adam, Adam yeah. Dingwell. Thank you. Y'all have a good one, guys. Take care. You too. Peace. Rob 
often in motion. Throwing it back to Escobar. Escobar came across the field, refusing to go down. And look at the big man. 